Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to just kind of play around with watercolor. It's the beginning of a new year, a new decade, and uh, so I've uh, been practicing with some uh, hot press paper that I had uh, have a little supply of thanks to an error in uh, manufacturing and distribution process. So I am uh, have a piece of hot press uh, Fabriano uh, paper here that's uh, um, supposed to be cold pressed, but it turns out it's hot pressed. And uh, so I'm going to try to throw a little abstract together today. I don't know, have a clue what it's going to look like. Um, I don't have any preconceived ideas or preconceived sketches. I did throw a little bit of uh, masking uh, fl uh, fluid on here from one of these uh, quilling tools that you can get that you can put some very fine lines on if you want. I put some on, I smeared a little bit with my hand, so I've got some some blockages on here already. Um, one of the, one of the things that I have picked up and, and uh, um, have collected, I guess, over time is a set of things that you can do to kind of add to sort of, I guess, as this says, jumpstart your creativity when you're trying to figure out something to paint, uh, whether it's abstract or not. Um, this particular um, set of things, six things, say, uh, one is like connect seven dots, literally dot your surface seven times and get started connecting them with pattern and texture, color, and any kind of mark that comes to you. All are welcome. Uh, start using your non-dominant hand to begin with. Uh, so I would use my left hand to start something if I want to do that. Another uh, tip is uh, alter your surface by crumpling your paper, smear it with a wash, flick paint at it, whatever. Um, I probably won't do that here since I already have this taped down to a board. I'm not going to do that. Uh, use only one color. That's another way to force yourself to work on texture and, and, and shapes uh, to uh, get very creative. Uh, use only one tool, may, maybe one brush. I think I've tried to do a one brush painting before. You may have seen that. Um, another tip is to close your eyes or blindfold yourself. Uh, just start fresh and see what you can paint without even looking at the paper hardly. So that is my ideas. and. Uh, I've got a little bit on here. I'm going to line this up so I can show you the uh, the palette and uh, if I can get it set up here. There we go. All right. Um, let me go to the palette and I want to show you the paints and the brushes. Um, you're familiar with my uh, Sterling Edwards palette here, big brush palette. Um, I have a set of his uh, bristle brushes, these m large, medium, small. Uh, those are really great for working on paper like this. I don't know how well they'll work on hot press paper. I've used them on cold press paper, so we'll see. Today we'll experiment with that. I have a one inch flat and a half inch flat. I have a number 12 round, a number 8 round, a number 4 round, and I have a script liner. So that's all the brushes I'm going to have at my disposal. Um, I think I'm going to try to limit myself maybe to three or four colors today. Um, so I'll go around the, the palette and tell you what the colors are that I have available, and then I'll tell you which ones I'm going to try to use. Um, today we have, <clears throat> as usual, my palette consists of uh, Holbein transparent watercolors. And uh, this is Payne's Gray. This color is Cobalt Blue. This is Ultramarine Deep Blue. This color is Royal Blue, a very dark blue. Uh, Permanent Violet, Green Gray, Burnt Umber, or it's just Umber, not Burnt, Umber, Straight Umber, which is darker and browner than a Burnt Umber. We have a Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Lemon Yellow. So. Uh, I've got those to work with. I think I'm going to try to restrict myself possibly to uh, uh, this uh, beautiful quinacridone gold here. It's a beautiful uh, uh, sort of a bright yellowish color, similar to uh, ochre, but not exactly because it doesn't. It's not have as opaque. And I'm going to try to stick with quinacridone scarlet and maybe my uh, permanent violet over here for a bluish color and a little bit of Payne's gray to make sure I can get some dark dark. So, with that said, with what's on my uh, paper here already. Um, I'm going to wet this thing with a big brush and uh, we're going to get started. So I'm going to take clear water with my my big, um, big large brush and I'm going to put some water on here. This is, like I said, it's hot pressed paper so um, it has a much smoother surface and uh, it, it tends to 
to react differently to the water. Sometimes it runs, sometimes it, uh, um, it, it, it here, it uh, got a pair on there, okay. Um, sometimes it soaks it up really well, and uh, other times it's almost like painting wet on dry all the time. So I experimented with this in my last painting, and uh, so I don't know if you can see in detail there how closely uh, all the, uh, the marks uh, that I have here. Uh, but that's the uh, that is the paper with a nice wet surface. I'm going to let that set for a second to let that water sort of absorb into there. And uh, okay, so there's our our uh, wet surface. And I'm going to to give myself some dots. I'm going to use this. Uh, use seven dots and my dots are going to be um, some of my color here, some of my paint and uh, I'm just going to throw a dot or two in here. There's a dot. Put one over here like this. These are not pinpoint dots. These are just big blobs of paint dots. Three right there. Um, how about one over here like right in there? Four. Uh, let me throw a little red on here somewhere. Right there, there's X marks the spot for that one. Five, six, seven. Mix that orange and red together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I have seven dots. All right. This is the beginning of an abstract. I have no clue what it's going to be. I have nothing to look at. So let's go up here and let's put in a few marks up here like this, put in something like that, a uh, little echo. So I didn't really connect that dot to anything. I just sort of surrounded it. Um, so let's come back and pick up a little bit of my quinacridone scarlet here and uh, come in here like this and put a few things like this over here. And maybe run it off the paper down here, I don't know. I'm just using these big brushes in uh, sort of a interesting pattern. And uh, I've got this other, uh, I'm going to connect these dots here and there. All right. So I'm just using a big brush. So far, I haven't used anything smaller than this two inch medium here. Well, I did put my uh, Take that back. I did use my uh, round number 12 to throw some, some dots up here. Okay, let's get some more uh, paint here that's a little thicker. I'm going to pull out my uh, Payne's Gray now. Put some of it here. Um, one way to tell how thick your paint is when you're painting wet on wet, and this is paper. I, I wet the whole thing, but now it's really drying out big time. Um, and so it's... <laughs> It's almost as if I hadn't really put any water on it. Amazing. Um, it's running like crazy, so let's just fill that in. Because I'm painting vertically, the paper is, is uh, hot press. It's basically really smooth, and so this paint's just sort of running like crazy. It's okay. So if I don't like this, I'm not going to put it on my YouTube channel. <laughs> You'll never see it. <laughs> but I'm going to try to make it so it's maybe presentable, a little bit presentable. And uh, put a few different kinds of things in here that uh, look like we've got some uh, structure maybe. I don't know. Mixing up some colors and mixing up some angles. Um, Go back to my round brush here. I'm going to get this thing out and see if I can. Uh, so far, I've only used these four colors: this uh, um, quinacridone gold, uh, quinacridone scarlet, permanent violet here, and uh, my Payne's gray. So that's my palette. Um, what do I got going on here? This is sort of.
So I want to try to keep an area that's got some white in it so that I have a place where the focal point is. I think the focal point might be over here where my darkest dark and lightest light is going to be in this area. So I'm going to sort of emphasize some of these dark colors over here with my brush and uh, my round brush, I should say. Uh, and uh, when I pull off this masking fluid after a bit, you'll be able to see some, some nice white areas in there. Um, I don't know what to do here. Let's see, let's pull down, maybe I'll put in a very dry brush, something fairly dry brush here. Kind of looks like that might be connected going up this way. And um, there's no reason to just stick to three colors or four colors. Uh, it's just sort of a thing to sort of simplify my life right now. I want this to be, oh, I'm painting over that fixity right there. So it's not even going to show up as really dark. So I want some angles, I want some things that aren't necessarily geometric. I got a nice geometric triangle here that I need to modify. I got a big triangle right here visually. You see triangles because of my angles, uh, the angled brush strokes. And uh, so I want to uh, see if I can enhance that a little bit by making these not quite so specific. and. Uh, I have some white that's going to show up under there. So I'm trying to leave an abstract shape in here. And you see that, that looks like that's fairly abstract. Uh, so I'm using my round brush to try to get that abstractness. And over here, I'm going to put in some other darks that kind of help highlight this area. One thing about, now this is I'm painting over the fixity. Right? That's where I took my, uh, masking fluid I ran my finger down so that's all going to come off right in there that's going to be all clear so I'm going to have this nice white streak going up there it's going to be connected to some other white streaks to hopefully bring your eye around here whether it will or not I don't know I'm going to get my other flat brush get my big one inch flat brush here and uh, we'll do some work with it and see what uh, what we can come up with here with these colors Mix a few together and get some oranges in here with this uh, quinacridone gold and my scarlet color. Um, matter of fact, see right here, very bright, like that. Let's take this off paper like that. All right, I've got this very orangey color. This scarlet and uh, quinacridone gold make a very beautiful orange. Close this corner off. I'll pull another value down over it like this. And uh, one of the things you can do with, a, with one of these uh, bristle brushes is to get some soft edges. Everything's pretty hard edge right now. So I'm going to take this bristle brush, some clear water in it, and uh, come in here and just sort of tickle these edges, pull this down like this, and uh, you can see I get a nice blended edge here, a soft edge, while I have the hard edges here. Um, it's always a good trick to, to uh, use with these bristle brushes. They make an interesting uh, uh, surface and interesting uh, soft um, edges by doing that. So let's see if I can throw in some more. There's my uh, flat brush. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to come back now and see what I can do down here in this corner. I'm going to echo this orange slightly down here. It's a little bit darker. I'm putting a little bit of uh, color in it that uh, didn't have before, a little darker, a little darker. So I'll leave this white and then I'm going to put a darker color like right in here. 
and I'll have this counter position of the light and dark but that's too wet to go back in there so I'm going to leave that for now put in a few things here so I have nothing I'm looking at folks I'm just kind of reacting to whatever's on the canvas paper canvas um, and uh, like this All right, so what's that doing for me? I'm going to take it and sort of tickle the edge over here, sort of blend this together a little bit. So it just gives me some soft and ed hard edges here. I, I've softened these edges. I didn't really go over them that much, um, but it does give an interesting uh, texture to that. Okay. Back and get some of this scarlet here, this uh, quinacridone scarlet, beautiful color. And here, and put in a few bright red marks. Like that. And take my brush here and Tickle those edges a little bit, sort of fill that out. I think I'm covering up my white area. I still have some white here. I'm going to have a big piece of white here. Maybe my white's going to end up in the center. Uh, my lightest light is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't have to be white, but it's got to be a, a light light. So I'm mixing some purple and uh, purple for my bluish color and my Payne's gray. And uh, see what I can do here. Just a something like that. I have a nice rectangular box here. That's a geometric shape I'd like to not have. So let's see if I can. just made it a bigger rectangular shape right so let's fix the top of it and put some uh, more connectivity in here so that it's I'm getting some a bit of an ab abstract shape over here uh, pick up another color and let's see if I can pull it down this way there Close this color, this, this corner in down here as much as possible with some vertical streaks like that. All right. Um, what do I want to put in here? Oh, that's a good place for maybe some of my bright yellow. How am I going to do it? Let's go like this. these up this way like this all right and uh, take this water and soften this edge tone some of that color down Throw a few spots of water on here and see if I can get some more runniness going. And uh, come back with one of my mixture colors here and see if I can do something in here. That's too much, um, too much of the same color right in here. So I want to mix it up a little bit so that I don't have one big 
glob there. It's all the same color. I got a little white right there that's going to come out. I'm just putting this, this scarlet color over some of this that's so rectangular. And uh, this is really bright right here. I'll emphasize that a little more, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, what am I going to do with this space over here? I have a dot over there that I haven't connected to anything. So this yellow, gold, and purple make a good, good color combination. So let's come back in here and see if we can put in a few things that maybe get, get to some loose. As I sprayed that, and uh, I'm going to spray a little more. Give it to run. There we go. So that made a streak all the way down the page. All right. Now let's put a little more color up the top there. So we have this. Okay. I've got some more areas I can put in some smaller. Use my uh, half inch brush here. <laughs> this is going pretty fast, folks. I uh, had no idea how fast it was going to take to paint this, or didn't even know what I was going to paint. And you may not like this at all. I may not like this at all when I get done. Step back. But we're trying to. Uh, just paint loose and let it go, not obsess over it. So just tone that down a little bit so it's not all perfectly white over there by pulling this color in. Um, a little bit of my purplish color here. Let's tone that down a little bit. All right, so now I have my big white area here in the center, and uh, I have some blossoms forming in some places. I have some runs in some places. I have, this was sort of a forced blossom here because I sprayed my uh, Use my mister there to spray that top. Okay. Um, let's see what I'm going to do in this center section here. Get my little flat half inch brush. Haven't used him too much. So, let's see if I can come back over that. And, uh, <clears throat> that get back and get some really dark I'm gonna come in and put in some really dark darks now and see if I can emphasize some of these areas that I want to have a really dark section black 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 as I can make it now that is going right over that masking fluid and it's going to make a uh, white opening right beside it. So let's just put this over like this. Like that. Take my brush here and pull it down a little bit here. You know, it just blends that out, makes nice soft edges. <coughs> All right. Um, 
what am I going to do? This, there's some uh, masking fluid in there that, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm painting over it now. It's going to come off. So it's going to leave an interesting abstract shape right through there. So I'm going to have an interesting abstract shape right there in the middle. Um, here on this area here, I'm going to come back and see if I can fill this in a little bit with uh, some dark. And uh, soften up a few edges here. I have this little white streak here that goes up, kind of fall, follows through it, kind of runs into this one above it. Um, so that's an interesting possibility. Um, over here I'm going to have some uh, marks that are going to be dark, like this. I don't know why, I just want to put them in that way. Put a little bit of a diagonal in here. Maybe I think I need, well, I can do that with my, I'm going to leave this this way right now until I take my masking off and see what it looks like. All right, <laughs> have a nice rectangular, a square looking piece right here, which I would like to modify if I can. A bit of a angular thing in here. See if I can do this. Pull it out. All right. That's at least it makes it more abstract back in there. So I don't have this exact there. All right. Here. This is. I guess most of it's getting fairly dry. turn in my uh, let me get my hair dryer out and blow this thing dry now I want to put a few more really dark darks in here maybe or maybe I'll just wait until I blow it dry and pull this masking off that way it will help me see more what I've got to work with here. All right, let's do that. Let's get the hair dryer out and blow this thing dry. <clears throat> Make sure it's good and dry before I try to pull that masking fluid off. So let's go here. <laughs> So there's the, uh, now let's see if I can get this masking fluid off here. So I'm using a pickup, one of these rubber pickups. All right, it's fairly, very dry. Masking fluid is picked up and so all we have to do is finish this with a few more uh, maybe some really dark darks in there if I can get some more of this Payne's gray and a little bit of my purple together and uh, Where do I need some darks? I want your eye to kind of focus in this area here so I'm going to try to uh, Darken wherever the light is out here uh, Make it darker in some areas and make it Sort of point you to the area I want you to look at uh, Maybe that will do it. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Here's a nice little place to put a little dark right in there. Maybe up here a little dark. Like that. 
So this is just all made up, came right out of my head for what that's worth. And a few of these marks like this. That looks like a, I don't know what that looks like, but one of the things you should do usually before you sign your abstract is to uh, turn it around all four directions and see what looks the best because um, sometimes it looks better in a whole different format than what you have painted it in. So do that. Let's get a, let me get my uh, round brush here and I'm going to start making some uh, additional uh, circular motions here like that um, to sort of help pull it together maybe a little more maybe there's something right in here like this um, give it some movement uh, that's really all this is doing uh, giving the whole thing some movement up here maybe I just want to something like that all right now the only other thing I would like to do is throw some splatter on here and uh, we'll call it finished um, get some of this dark dark colors here and get them very very wet a lot of water in them and uh, I usually do it by hitting my hand hitting it on my hand like this um, seems to uh, work better for me than some artists will take it and tap it like that but I can never seem to get any anything off when I do that so I just splotch it like this and uh, but up here maybe there this looks kind of plain and bland there's a big area up here that has nothing going on uh, so let's let's pop in some very specific splatters up there kind of helps that out the splattering always kind of makes it come to life put a few curved things put a few angular things uh, put a few splatters in there and uh, you'll make your abstract really come to life splattered it all over myself okay folks I think I'm going to uh, <clears throat> back up here and say I haven't signed it yet. Notice I haven't signed it. I'm going to wait for a little bit. Probably going to sign it right in here if, as long as it looks good this way. But I may turn it in the portrait fashion and see if it looks better the other way. But uh, <clears throat> right now I think I'm going to just leave it at that. And uh, so I probably could put a few more darks in. It, it looks like the, uh, the focal point is kind of in this area right here. But there needs to be probably some more darks. Probably could use some darks in this area up here. Um, just to kind of force your eye into this this area here something like that maybe put a pointer in there like that that I don't know that that it's kind of up to you whatever whatever figure out where your eye goes in this piece and uh, see if you can improve it by putting some uh, other marks and dots and whatever. Um, this is a big area that kind of needs some uh, something more going on here, but um, I'm going to ruin it if I don't stop. So I'm going to just kind of quit with that and say, all right, I'm done. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope you give these abstracts a try. They're a lot of fun if you're not really um, painting anything specific. You're just kind of putting colors together to maybe fit together the oranges and the purples here and the, the blues and the uh, sort of the purple and the uh, the uh, uh, scarlet color and the uh, Payne's gray. Um, and uh, you're trying to make a pleasing set of shapes that kind of fit together and kind of draw the eye, let the eye move around the painting and uh, see if people like it. Um, that's all I know how to do. Uh, so I'm going to stop now and say, uh, please check out my website, check out my Facebook page, and uh, uh, check out Patreon. I have a place there where you can leave me a tip for coffee or something. Uh, and uh, so until I see you again, that's Larry Hamilton saying uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.